the other day I put up a question box on my Instagram account or Jess's Instagram account and asked you what you wanted to know about our social media. These are mainly questions about how we run the account, how it's grown, what it's like, how we manage it. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, keep watching because that's what I'm going to be answering. Want to be in my video? Okay, I've resigned myself to the fact that she's gonna come and go, that's her business. She's not settling very well at the moment because I think her tummy's feeling quite sore, so yeah, just leaving her to it. Okay, so first question is, what made you wanna start your Instagram? Um, and I think there's a few answers to this. Um, one is that Jess is super cute, and I felt like that was worth sharing. Another one is that I love social media, I love Instagram in particular, and I've really enjoyed running Instagram accounts in the past. Um, for me, I follow loads of really lovely accounts that bring me joy, and um, I felt like there was a possibility for me and Jess to be part of that for other people. Another thing is that I'm really interested in sort of growing Instagram and social media accounts. Um, I am a social media manager by trade, I'll talk more about that in a minute because there were some questions about that. So I thought it'd be an, an interesting opportunity to try my hand at growing something from scratch and see how it went. And also before we started the Instagram we'd been living with Jess for a year or so and um, I'd really got a sense and a feel for her personality and she really does worry. She is worried. I'd say it's like her, you know, especially back then, like her primary <laughs> character trait. I felt like there was so much to say about how she navigates the world and her bravery and it was just so relatable that it seemed like a natural thing to do to share it. Okay, next question is, when you started your Instagram did you think it would get this big? I think the answer is, I wasn't really sure, I had no idea what would happen. To be honest, what I thought would happen is that I would start posting, not very much would happen and I would get bored. <laughs> Obviously not get bored of Jess and taking pictures of Jess and stuff, but just get bored of like the commitment of the whole thing. Um, but that hasn't happened. As it's gone on, I've loved it more and more and um, it's become a really central part of my life now and I'm so happy about that. Next question, do you and Ma do this as your full-time job? The answer is no, but we do do it as our part-time job. I'm gonna go and get Jess. I feel like this video is less good without her. My mojo is gone. She is my mojo. I will be back in a sec. Yay! Um, she was on a Zoom call with Oliver downstairs, like on the Zoom call, like chatting to people. When you? Oh yeah, we were answering, do you and Ma do this as a full-time job? Yeah, the answer to that question is no. Um, I've just recently started doing it as a part-time job. Um, it does make me some income through brand partnerships and um, merchandise through our merch shop which has just been fantastic and so exciting and has only really started over the last sort of six months or so. It's so exciting for a number of reasons. Um, one of them is because I get to work with Jess, my tiny overlord. Another one is just that um, I love these accounts so much and spending more time on them and having more time to, to dedicate to them means that A, I'll be able to make more and better content and that's just very exciting. I've got so many ideas for what I can do with it. What was B? Maybe B was just that it makes me so happy that um, doing more of it is just going to make me a happier person. Also it's really nice working for myself and it's been a space where I can really open up about my own experience as well, as well albeit sort of through the lens of my dog. Okay, that was all the support I'm getting from her. Question four is how do I plan my social media schedule? And the answer is I don't really. I've gone through phases with this, like phases of planning it a bit more, phases of not really planning it at all. Um, at the moment, I'm in the not really planning it at all, but I am trying to set up some sort of regular fixtures. So, in the past, I used to use um, Later um, and Planoli. Planoli? I don't know. Anyway, um, it must, it's not like cannoli, like pasta, is it? It's like Planoli. 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 Anyway, those are both tools that I've used that are really great, where you can sort of queue your social media posts and um, you'll get a notification when it's time to post them to Instagram and you just go into the app and do it and it's really easy. Um, and I've definitely gone through phases where I'll have sort of three days of posts lined up ahead of time um, when I've been more organized and that's great, but actually I found that we produce better content when it's off the cuff. So at the moment I won't know what I'm gonna post until I'm about to post it. But I do try and do things like on a Tuesday I'll do a check-in um, 
and just let people know how we're getting on and ask people how they're getting on. I really like those because I really like to get a sense of how everyone's doing and what everyone needs. Like it's great to post happy content when we're happy and sad content when we're sad. You know, it's nice just to get a sense for how everyone else is doing as well and to be able to respond to that. Um, so I do lots of check-ins on my stories, but it's nice to do a bit more of a thorough one on a Tuesday on my feed, so I'll do that. Um, but that doesn't really help me with what to post as an image or a reel, so I don't know, I'll just come up with that on the day. And then recently I've started on a Wednesday doing Wednesday Friends Day, which was, I mean, we did it for the first time last week and I cried and laughed all evening. It was hysterical and lovely and basically what happened was on Tuesday we did the Tuesday check-in and everyone just sounded really miserable. I think we were feeling quite low too, it was, you know, it was the middle of January, like everyone's feeling shit anyway. On the Wednesday I thought it'd be a nice idea to um, share a post and ask people to sort of post their achievements in the comments and then we could all go in and like like and comment on each other's stuff and just lift each other up and I thought it'd be like a nice supportive way of like really communicating as a community and it was absolutely lovely like lovelier than I could possibly have imagined it was just wonderful so I'll definitely be doing those again so yeah I find that stuff like that like having a having something that's attached to a day of the week for example just helps me to kind of have something in the calendar I know just to like organize my thoughts a bit better but generally speaking I'm just coming up with stuff as and when Question number five is, how did you grow your following? And the answer is, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Basically what happened is I started the account in October of 2019. And then obviously in March 2020, we went into lockdown. I think when we went into lockdown, I had one and a half or maybe 2000 followers or something. And by the time we came out, I had 20, 25,000 followers. Yeah, so it just kind of really took off. And I think it took off because um, we were all feeling really anxious all the time. Like we were in a sort of national and international identity and anxiety crisis. And Jess the dog on a very small scale is going through all of those things every day as well. So I think people just found it really relatable. And it kind of got me through lockdown. Like I really enjoyed working on it. I really enjoyed feeling like I was making connections and friendships and I was talking to people a lot and there was a lot of solidarity. So that, I mean, really helped. Also, I did things like, I can't remember now, but we did lots of sort of interactive stuff where people would send us pictures of stuff and we'd share it and I don't know, like match the dog with the owner and stuff. We did quite a lot of things like that. And I think they, they helped contribute to the growth of the account. I also, I started off, I'll show you some examples here or here or somewhere, but I started off taking really bad pictures of Jess on like an iPhone 7. Yeah, they just weren't great at all. But over the lockdowns, I got much better. I bought myself a better phone and I bought myself a studio lamp and I worked out how to take pic better pictures of Jess basically. So to begin with, I was just trying to snap like a picture of her whenever she was walking past. But like later on, I learned that if I had a treat, then I could you know, get her attention, get her looking at the camera. And I began to learn through looking at my analytics what was working well and what wasn't working well. Yeah, so that definitely improved and that was just something I had time for over lockdown, I think, too. Next question. What's your greatest achievement from running Worried With It? I think I'm gonna have to come back to that one because I don't know. You stinky. You stinky. Okay. So, what's happened is, she's got on the bed, curled up between my legs, and fallen asleep. Okay, next question. Do you ever find running Worried Whippet stressful? And the answer is, yeah, like, very, very occasionally. Sometimes I put too much pressure on myself, in terms of, like, getting content out all the time. And um, when that happens, somebody normally notices and sends me a really kind DM being like, hey Jess, just wanted to say, like, take some time for yourself. Um, and I always think, yeah, you're right, like, <laughs> um, this is supposed to make me happy too. Um, yeah, so there have definitely been times when it's been a bit like that. And there have been times when it's been hard to balance with other things in my life. But yeah, like, generally speaking, the account does much more to alleviate stress in my life than it does to create stress in my life. Um, if, I've, if I'm stressed about other things, it's a nice little hiding place. And if I'm ever feeling down, I know that going into my DMs is 
a really nice place to be and to find solidarity and support. There's always nice messages in there and um, so many kind people who wish us well. And that's a really lovely thing that I feel very, very grateful for and very fortunate to have. Actually, there is another thing, which is that like recently I've found like reels. There's just quite a lot of pressure around reels and I love making them. But like sometimes I just go through phases where I don't have the time or I don't find a sound that I like or I don't know, I'm just not really bothered. And then I find that a bit stressful if I haven't posted one for a while and I'm thinking I need to post a reel and blah, blah, blah. But again, I just try and remind myself like this is just fun and levity and joy and if it's not bringing you those things then yeah so when that happens I just post a nice photo or sometimes I repost something that I posted in the past yeah just cut myself some slack okay this is a good question it is um which accounts do you enjoy following or aspire to be like and um there's a really good one which is um before I started Worried With It, and I think kind of inspired me to do it the way I did it, was um, Margaret, the Italian Greyhound. Um, I don't know if you know or knew Margaret, RIP Margaret. She was um, just wonderful. I mean, a wonderful account, really good fun, such a character. There was a lot of like narrative and storytelling in there. Basically, Margaret was like um, a businesswoman running um, an Iggy clothing account uh, or an Iggy clothing shop. She had all sorts of issues with her romance and her uh, employees and, you know, HR problems. And um, she was just an absolute dose of hilarity. Uh, my sister and I were completely obsessed and, and really sad when she died. But we're very excited that her account has now been taken over by um, her sister, Beatrice carrying on running their business, Miggy Wear, and uh, has inherited some of the romance and HR problems that Margaret left behind her. So um, that's been a flash of joy, but it definitely made me think like, Margaret was such a character and Jess is such a character. And it made me think, I don't know, it sort of inspired the worriedness of the worried whip it. Um, yeah, all right. Other accounts that we enjoy following, I feel like we should do some shout outs, shouldn't we? We really enjoy following um, Lolly, The Whippet. There's quite a lot of sort of lifestyle content there as well. Um, and it's just like a lovely and very beautiful aesthetic account to follow. Um, Nello, The Italian Greyhound. Honey, The Italian Greyhound. There's lots of really good Iggy's out there on Instagram. How did you come up with the idea of the cute selfie angle that you use? Um, well, we were at the Tower of London one day and Ollie went to take a picture of Jess and the angle he took it from looked like a selfie and the first selfie was born. And then, <laughs> yeah, ever since then, we've just kind of messed around with it and tried to find more ways of doing it. Yeah, so there are a few different kind of angles that we use and ways that we do it. So first of all, there's the kind of like trying to get her head in the frame um, selfie that you all know and love. <laughs> Then um, there's one where we get her, we use a command up and we get her to jump up and put her paws up on you and it looks like she's kind of reaching out at this angle um, and taking a selfie of herself like that. And then what's the third one? Oh, okay. The third one is um, where we kind of snap her when she's not, con she's not concentrating and she's looking at something else and you get some really funny ones that way. So the way Ollie does it is he puts the front camera on and then he sort of angles the phone ever so slightly upward and just holds it in front of her and snaps away. I don't know how to describe it any better than that, but that's just how we do it. Okay, next question. Did I study something related to social media? Uh, no, not at all. I studied languages at university, uh, but then I've always worked in kind of marketing and social media marketing jobs. I love social media. There's so much wrong with it. It's so problematic. It makes people so miserable. Um, there are so many issues with data and confidentiality and all of this stuff. But for me, there's so much potential and capacity for like joy and connection there. And I really love that about it. I'm kind of obsessed. It's been really fantastic for me. It's been really central to my mental health recovery journey. Um, I've made loads of really great friendships through social media. Okay, I'm back. Sadly, Jess the dog has gone downstairs. I think that's fair. I'll show you some footage of her. She's snuggled up in a chair, she looks very cozy. Okay. What are your top tips for humans who want to create an Instagram account for their pup? This is a good one. I would say, have a think about what your strengths are. 
So for me, my strength was never photography. Like I was taking really bad photos. There are some really beautiful dog photography accounts out there and I was just never gonna be able to compete with that. Um, also, I wasn't convinced that any of you were gonna think that Jess was as cute as I think she is. I didn't know that people were gonna think she is completely adorable. I thought maybe that was just me. Anyway, yeah, so think about what your strengths are. If your strengths are photography, then great. Go for like a photography oriented page. Um, but if not, try and think about something else that might set you apart. So um, I guess with our account, it's Jess's personality and her character and her anxiety. And, you know, we've got a sort of mental health focus and stuff, um, but just, having a cute dog, there are so many cute dog accounts out there um, that it's going to be hard for people to find you, so um, I would definitely try and think about something that's like your niche. I would also say be consistent, stick at it, I know everyone says this, it's a real grind, um, but yeah try and make some friends with other people with accounts your size in your area. You'll enjoy it more that way and you'll build some really meaningful relationships and it will help you to grow. So it's a win-win-win. There was one more question, which is what is your greatest achievement from running Worried With It? I think I read this out earlier and then didn't answer it, needed some time to think about it. But honestly, like Worried With It is my greatest achievement from <laughs> running Worried With It. Like the community around the account is just fantastic. And when I realized quite early on that people were opening up on the account, that it was enabling people to open up about how they were feeling and how they were managing things, especially during lockdown. When I realized that that was happening, that was pretty amazing. Um, it feels like an enormous privilege and a responsibility and my biggest achievement. It's a wonderful thing that people feel that way in a space that, that we or that I've created. So yeah. I'll never get over that bit. And then this one says, not a question, just thank you for all the great content. Ah, that's so nice and you're so welcome. And um, thank you all for being here. It's bloody lovely. As I'm always saying, I have so much fun running this account, like so much fun. And I'm just so grateful for everyone who's here and enjoying it and for everyone who's here on my YouTube as well. I wasn't sure how this would go, but um, I'm really enjoying it. This video is obviously, uh, all over the place but <laughs> who knows what it will look like after editing fingers crossed we can make something of it anyway thank you for your questions I'm gonna do some more q and a's on various different topics i know you've got loads of questions about the renovation so definitely want to answer those and just about jess herself and how she's doing also if you're wondering about her tummy she is all right we think um she's just doing um, some slightly funky poos at the moment she's on sort of a plain food diet and various worming things and whatever um, but she seems to be happy enough within herself. I just can't, um, can't give her any treats and she's not happy about that. I'm not happy about that. So, but hopefully it's not for long. Patience is a virtue. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Bye. Hey again, just to say, always forget to do this, but as always, um, do like, do comment, do subscribe if you're enjoying these videos and let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you want to know.